Hey there, it's Kelly Pickler. You're listening to the DJ Danny Show. Good evening, everyone. Today is Tuesday, June 9th, 2020. Welcome to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net stream HR2. I'm your host, DJ Danny, and I'm so honored and very, like, excited. Wow, you guys really need to know who my guest is. She's amazing, and she's so bubbly and sweet, so you're going to get to know her tonight. <laughs> um, her name is Ashley Hess. And a lot of people um, have known her from also being on American Idol. She was on season 17, but she's working on some music, and she's an amazing musician. You're going to hear some music tonight. And I also want to say a big shout-out and a thank you to Justin Germont, who is tuning in tonight. Um, thank you so much for this connection with Ashley. Um, we're so excited to get to know each other and speak, and thank you so much. Hello. Hi, Ashley. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, I am <laughs> just... That's a kind introduction. I just want to bring you with me everywhere and have you introduce me to everyone. Oh, my gosh. It's the same. I feel like I want to put you in my pocket kind of thing. It's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ashley, amazing. why don't we get a little bit started with a lot of people that are tuning in who might be a little new to learning more about yourself. Um, where mm -hmm. exactly, what age were you when you first got introduced to music where it's something you really wanted to do? So I feel like my story is pretty interesting because I feel like a lot of musicians and artists kind of have an idea that music is something that they want to do from a really young age. Mm -hmm. And I feel like when I was younger, I would walk around the house singing and I loved just having music on. Mm -hmm. um, but it wasn't really something that I thought of pursuing seriously until a lot later in life. So it wasn't until I was in my early 20s, honestly, that I... I was going to school and I thought I had an idea of what career I wanted and the path that I was going to take. And funny enough, I thought I wanted to be a dental hygienist and I was focused on that, but oh. I realized quickly that that's not what I wanted to do. Oh my gosh. So I kind of went back hygienist. to the drawing board of like, okay, well, what do I love to do? What are things that I enjoy doing And music has kind of just always been a part of my life. And so, um, I was about like 21 that I, when I decided like, okay, this is something that I enjoy doing. And so I just kind of picked it up as a hobby again, just to refresh my memory. I had taken piano lessons in like seventh and eighth grade, but mm -hmm. that was like the extent of my music knowledge. I had been in choirs and things like that, but it was more so just for fun. So I kind of taught myself guitar a little bit and I, I play everything by ear. So I just started like listening to the radio and listening to music that I liked and figuring it out on the piano and just started singing and um, yeah. And then I just, I really mm -hmm. discovered that I loved it. And then at the time I was working full time and just doing music on the side. And then, um, about two years ago, I was like, okay, this is actually something I seriously want to pursue. And so I moved to Nashville and jumped all in and decided I'm just going to give it a shot. And now I am a full time musician and it is amazing. That's amazing. Wow. That's a yeah. huge journey and a fun one. And I, I just love yes. how it yes. switched to being a dental hygienist um, to a musician. <laughs> you could be the same doctor, Not you know, a dental, <laughs> dentist. That's amazing. No, I think, um, like, did you go to school and every for, everything for that at first? Or was it just something? Yeah, like I started, I had started, um, like, I was working on getting in the program. And mm -hmm. I had worked at an oral surgeon's office in high school. Mm -hmm. And so I was just like, well, that's something I could do. But. Then once I started getting into it, I just realized that I like, I mean, it's nice. Everybody needs their teeth cleaned. Like that is a great job. But I just did, I decided it was not what I wanted oh, for yeah. myself personally. It might have been and your so, heart wasn't there too. It was yeah. something that, you know. Yeah. Yes. You can only love teeth yeah. so much. <laughs> yes. Right. Exactly. And I, I just love people and I love talking with people and meeting mm -hmm. people and working with people. But. I mean, you're cleaning their teeth, so you can't really talk to them. You <laughs> <True>. know? <laughs> well, you so, both have a mask yeah, on. I just so. quickly learned that that was not for me. Mm -hmm. um, and ironically enough, I just, music has always kind of been a part of my life. Um, but for the most part, it was just kind of, it was something I always loved. But it's an intimidating thing to try and pursue. There's so many people yes. that are, you know, that had been, trained and have been doing music their whole entire lives and so I felt very late to the game and I was oh. pretty intimidated about really trying to pursue it seriously but I also knew you know if I didn't I didn't want to look back on my life and have any regrets 
So no, exactly. I in. And I think it's amazing that you, you know, quickly switched your career into something that you really enjoy and love. Like we were yeah. saying before, I mean, with being a dentist, it's exciting for you to get to meet different people, but there's only so much you can do about teeth. I mean, it just goes down right. to root canals or you just start seeing ugly, nasty teeth. And then it's just like, this, is, this isn't for me anymore. Um, you know, my heart's yeah. somewhere else and I don't have to stare at people's teeth. So it's something yeah. that's more, um, more professional and fun for you. And I think it's pretty yeah. amazing how you switched your career completely to that. And this is something that your heart calls for. Yeah, thank you. It was, I mean, it wasn't like immediately I decided I didn't want to do dental mm -hmm. hygiene and then I jumped into music and everything was perfect. Like there was a long road of me, you know, figuring out what specifically I wanted to do with music because there's so many different avenues in the industry that you can pursue. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously there's the artist route, there's like production or like doing studio work or songwriting or there's just so many different things that you can do in music. And so I tried a lot of different things, you know, just to figure out what worked best for me. And I'm so grateful that, um, I'm just, I'm somebody that I love the process is hard because it's frustrating because mm -hmm. you have an idea of where you want to be and you're impatient and you want to get there. Yep. But I also <laughs> love the process. I love learning and growing and, um, I just kind of geek out over things and I get really excited about learning and, um, and so music is great because there's so many different things and there's always something you can be learning. So it's been really, it's been hard, but it's been really, really fun for me. Uh, Ashley, do you also play any instruments as well? Yes. So I play piano. Okay. Um, and I'm learning guitar. I can play enough to like get by, but I am not, I would not play guitar as an instrument that I am great at by any means. <laughs> <laughs> Just something for fun right now. Yeah, yeah. Just but definitely working on just getting better. Yep. I was going to say definitely working on that where you can maybe play acoustic guitar when you do shows after COVID and stuff live. Yes. That yep, would be, exactly. yeah, that's exciting to definitely watch. And it's more exciting to know that it's something that, you know, like you put your heart and soul in. And this is something yep. that I want to play guitar with my song, you know, or just do it acoustically mm -hmm. where you don't even need to yeah, play any totally. music. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. As for you uh, growing up and loving the music that you've been a part of, what type of inspirations um, do you take with yourself? So I, there was always music playing in my house. Um, my dad has a beautiful singing voice, and my mom is amazing on piano. And so um, I just loved listening to my dad sing, and my mom would always, you know, just be playing piano in the house and um we always just had music on in the house and it was just something that I I took to really young like I just I loved music and I always just music spoke to me from a really young age um and it's interesting because I feel like my music influences change often mm -hmm. um but I'm inspired by such a wide variety of music um I feel like um my dad would listen to jazz and things like that, but then like eighties oh, and okay. but then my mom would have country on in the house. So it was like a widespread of things that I feel like I was influenced by, but I really gravitate towards, um, I love like soul and R and B, mm -hmm. but I also love pop, but then like alternative and indie. So I just, there's so many different genres and things that I love. Um, anything that just makes me feel something like I, that I feel connected to. Um, Emotion. Yes, definitely. Yeah, totally. Um, but a couple of my favorite, favorite artists, I mean, John Mayer is a favorite for sure. Oh, yes. His songwriting is incredible. His guitar playing, obviously, like he's just um, one of a kind. And um, Tori Kelly, I absolutely oh, love, I love her. her. I love who she is as a person. Mm -hmm. I love her music. People compare me to her a lot, which is the best compliment oh. on the planet that will never get old to me because she is so, so incredible. Um, I love Sarah Bareilles. I love um, the artist Her, um, some older, like I love Stevie Wonder and Ava Cassidy, Nora Jones. Like there's just oh my gosh, David Coldplay, Cassidy. Yes. Alan Stone, Kevin Garrett. There's so many people that I love and that I, um, that, I that really, really inspire me. I could go on forever. <laughs> no, no problem at all. I love hearing your different inspirations and, you know, throughout all the genres of what you yeah. like and what speaks to you. And like we were saying a little bit before, with when you feel connected to a song, you get super emotional. And sometimes that doesn't mm -hmm. even happen. It's just where you feel the lyric and you just, I mean, you're just in the moment. <laughs> you blank out. Yes. 
Yes, so, exactly. Um, and that a lot so of that, true. and a lot of that also happens with musicians and stuff too. So with your music that you put out there, um, you know, for everybody that listens and gets a part of, you always try to pull emotion from all your songs, correct? Yes, that is a really big thing for me. Is I, I did um, videos on YouTube for a long time. I did cover videos of other people's songs, which was so fun. It was just fun to I love covers. You know, mm-hmm. take a song that I like and you know put it out there, but. I learned quickly that as much as I love doing that, I really wanted to create a song of my own and sing things that like personal experiences and Mm -hmm. just in the same way that I wanted to do for a listener that so many artists have done for me. Like there's been so many songs that I listen to that I'm like, wow, it's like those moments you hear a song and you're like, how did this artist know my life so perfectly? How did they explain it? In the lyrics, right? It explains (laughs) something you just thought of and then it's playing on the radio. It's crazy. And so I, I wanted to do that too, but I had no experience songwriting. I had no training. I had no idea what I was doing, but I was like, you know what? Like I'm human. Like I have emotions. Everyone has emotions. Like I can just start there and like, okay. So I would just kind of sit at the piano and it's nice because I play by ear. And so I'd be like, okay, if this is the song that I'm writing and this is the main emotion, like what does that emotion sound like to me? And then I'd figure out something on the piano and then kind of put words to it about like whatever it is I wanted to write about Mm -hmm. um just expressing that in a way that I felt like was real and honest so you play your um so when you're writing your music Ashley you like to write your chords first before the lyrics I mean or it depends I typically I do that typically I start with the music first um just because it helps me get Like, I just, I'm really, really, I really connect with music and it really evokes emotion for me. And so if I can hear the music, then it kind of sets the mood of what, you know, I'm I'm writing about. But typically I have an idea of what I want to write about and I have either like a concept or a phrase or a word or an experience that I want to write about. And then typically I do the music first and then the words, but there have been times when I've just written out the words and then put music to it. But it just kind of depends, I guess. But I feel like with when you want to write something that's like emotional or depending on how deep your music is um, or how you want your fans and viewers, family members to hear it, when you would write the the words, the lyrics always pull at the heartstrings no matter what. Even if it's just like a small little like chord that's under it, the lyrics are just, they just rip at your heartstring. Yeah, so. I am a huge lyric junkie. Obviously, a good melody is what draws people in, but yes. then you have to have good words to back it up. Right. Because it's like, okay, well, what are they talking about? Um, and I, gosh, lyrics just get me. I, sometimes I love to artists that I love, I'll just go. And I, instead of listening to their music, I'll just go sit and read their lyrics because it's just such a good exercise for me to be like, okay, look how they express this. But then even just reading it is like, Oh, that is, it's just so touching. And it just evokes so much emotion. And then when you add music to it, it just like, amplifies that and so I'm a huge lyrics are super important to me when I'm songwriting and the craziest thing is the way that we're talking about this as well it's totally like pushing me to um all of me by John Legend and that's an emotional emotional song where it just you know it's totally. the lyrics and it just makes you want to cry and it makes you want to hold someone yeah. like that's that's how it feels yes which for me I feel like as an artist like that's the sign of a job well done. Like if you put yeah. something out that even like one person connects to it and is like, makes them feel that way. It's like, yes, like I captured that thing that I was trying to capture. Mm-hmm. I love that. That's so success that's on your level. That. Yes. That's amazing. That's good. Um, that's actually a huge goal of yours when you guys, um, you know, first start out with being a musician and that's something that you want to maintain also, right? That's something that you want to always have in your back pocket, no matter what. Yeah, definitely. I think, that's one of the coolest parts, honestly, for me. I vividly remember the first time I played one of my own songs live. I was so scared because that's such a vulnerable, scary thing. It's like reading your diary on stage. Yes. With um, when you write honestly and when you write about real hard experiences and performing that for people, it's it's hard. It's really scary because you're essentially just setting yourself up for people to like pick apart your life and your thoughts and your feelings and your experiences. But I remember I played a song that I had written for the first time 
um, on stage and mm-hmm. a girl came up to me after and she's like, have you recorded this? Have you released this? Like, I just went through a similar thing and you explained that so perfectly. Like it brought me to tears. Thank you. And I was like, that was one of the moments that I just like wanted to wrap up and put in my back pocket for the hard days when I'm struggling or stressed because I'm like, that is what makes all of it worth it for me is those moments when people. The sweat and tears. Disconnect. Yes. Just, you know, yeah. all the stress that you guys deal with being a musician as well, where you're just trying to get that perfect lyric or that, that amazing uh, hook. Oh, my gosh. You want to get yeah. that hook stuck in our head? <laughs> that's just not fair. That always happens. Totally. And um, I know. I know. But that's a sign of a good song. <laughs> that and the emotion. I mean, that's just that's like what two keys of being an amazing musician and just putting yourself out there. And it's just promotion after that. Right. Yeah, I think somebody asked me the other day, they're like, well, what kind of artist do you want to be? And I, like, thought about it for a second, and I was like, an honest one. Like, I just, I want my music Mm -hmm. to be something that I feel like reflects me Mm -hmm. in a way that I'm proud of and in a way that that is real and that is honest and that I feel like people can connect with. And for me, that's, like, the artists that I love and the music that I gravitate towards the most are people that are just real and honest and vulnerable um, in their lyrics. I'm a, I'm such a sucker for that. <laughs> hey, there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, that just is an amazing part of being a musician. But I love that you're so down to earth and you want to be who you want to be. Don't let anyone change you, uh, depending on, you know, I know you're assigned to a management right now. But getting up and hire bigger things, just stay yeah. you and be very careful and always read contracts because there's a lot of scary stuff happening. And um, yeah. <laughs> I want you to yeah. stay safe. <laughs> it's It's just... It gets. I feel like it gets scarier by the moment when somebody releases that amazing hit that's like number one chart, which is the best thing for you. Don't get me wrong, but then you have to be mm-hmm. super careful on who contacts you after that, because then there's a lot of scams yeah. and then there's other stuff, and it's just a lot of stress and frustration, you know. And it's something that you okay. want to have so positive and loving. It's just crazy. Yeah, it is. I feel like. It's interesting because I love music so much and I love the creative aspect of it, but it really, at the end of the day too, it it is a business. And in order to be successful, you have to get involved in the business side. And there's a lot of that that's scary, like with contracts and with labels and management. Um, There's a lot, there's so much good and so much, so many incredible people in the industry, obviously, but just like anything else, it is a scary thing. And it's hard too, because you're essentially like, for me as an artist, I am the product that I'm selling. Yes. I am the business. And so it's a scary thing when what you're signing away is you and your songs and just your image and and likeness and everything. And it, it is a really intimidating and scary thing. But I've been pretty lucky with the people um, that I have on my team and that are that I'm working with. And it's I just I feel very, very blessed. And they're very supportive and they're there for you, which is also an amazing thing to have, um, you know, with you being the product and very protective too, because that also needs to be a thing. Yes, totally. Um, So important. Yes. But as for like you being the product with having either, you know, new music you want to release or if you have merchandise, that's another thing. You want to make sure that, you know, everything looks good. And that's another thing that can be very frustration as an artist yeah because it's a shirt that you love that's yours or something you know there are so many aspects of music that a lot of people don't think about and honestly that I didn't think about when I was getting into it I was like wow Mm -hmm. there are so many things that I need to be doing and that I need to be working on and that I need to just be aware of and mindful of Mm -hmm. um and it can be really overwhelming but um it's also fun I mean like there's a lot of aspects of it that are fun but it is there's just much um that it's easy to get overwhelmed which is why it's so important to have people that you trust and that you love that are excited about what you're doing Mm -hmm. that you know stand by your side and help you um i i cannot speak enough about how important it is to have a team of people that you love and trust that are helping you it's a hard 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 thing to try and do on your own It definitely is. And it's also amazing that you have the right team. You don't have anyone trying to knock you down or rip you apart because that happens too. And you never know when that happens. You just want to be super cautious and always on your toes for that. But you have a team that is extremely positive, uplifting, and you're so lovable and bubbly. It works perfectly. I mean, it's the perfect fit. 
Well, you're so sweet. Thank you. I would hope so. I think I just am so, I get so excited and so passionate about the music side mm -hmm. that I feel like, I hope that I draw people in that feel similarly. And I feel like I have, because you just kind of gravitate towards people that feel similarly. And so it's nice to be, I feel like I'm surrounded by people who are so passionate about what they're doing and um, are so goal oriented and hard workers. And it's just, it's so nice because it inspires me to do the same. And then hopefully I inspire them and it's just a cycle. Oh, of course. Um, so yeah, it's, I feel very blessed. Well, speaking about your team and everyone, um, I wanted to ask first about Alyssa, uh, your manager. How did you get connected with her or how did she get connected to you? So actually a funny story. So I was um, playing a show. I was opening for a friend of mine. Um, and this was in Salt Lake City at the time in Utah. Okay, and Utah. Um, Alyssa had been working with another artist and she'd been working on this artist team. And, um, and she was just volunteering at this venue just to hear new artists. And um, I was performing that night and she just came up to me after and was like, hey, I know I've never met you, but I would love to just, you know, sit down and get to know you and chat and see what your goals are. I love your set. Um, I think you're super talented. Okay. And at this time, like I was, I was still kind of just doing music for fun and playing shows and mm -hmm. just kind of figuring out what I wanted to do. So I was like, what, like, who is this person that like, this is crazy. She thinks I'm good and wants to know what I want to do. I was just, she was really making you extremely but... professional and you were like, uh, what am I doing? Yeah. And it's, it was just interesting. Um, but it was great because she was kind of getting started too. She was interning with this other artist, but she was wanting to get into management mm -hmm. and, um, and she just is a go getter. Like she's one of the hardest working people I know. And, um, just, is so so great and she's such a good person too which is a huge thing for me I just I'm really picky about you know who I let in because it's a, it's a scary thing you mm -hmm. know you don't want to end up with people that are going to eventually uh, make things hard for you or get into a contract where you're stuck or things like that but she just is someone that I trust and we just got to know each other and um started doing a few things here and there just to test the waters and I just saw her work ethic and everything that she was doing and how excited and genuinely passionate she was about me and what I was doing and how much she just purely wanted to help me. Um, and that was one of the coolest things as, as an artist, because obviously that's something that you hope for. Yes. You hope that you want the your music and your, mm -hmm. what you're doing inspires other people. And it was, it's one thing to inspire somebody in a crowd and like have them feel so connected to you. That is such a beautiful thing, but to inspire somebody enough to, want them to work with you and to help you and to dedicate so much time to what you're doing is um, the coolest thing. And she is just, oh, she has helped me so much. I would not be where I am right now without her. So I'm super, super grateful for her. Well, uh, big shout out Alyssa to Alyssa. Alyssa. She is so sweet. Yes, Alyssa, if you're listening to this, you're amazing. Thank you. <laughs> She's a rock star. Yeah, she is. And I think it's pretty amazing as how, you know, Justin's still being here listening to the chat. He also says that you remind him of Colby Callet. Oh, yeah. Amazing. I love Colby. She's, she's amazing. Yes. Um, but Alyssa was just amazing because, like I said, she reached out to me. She was like, can I have all the details? I just want to make sure everything's perfect so I can run it by Ashley. Um, I just want to make sure everything is great on her end. And, you know, she wanted to give you the details so smoothly versus, like, sending you all these different, like, links and, you know, like, text messages or all over the place. Totally. She is just – she gets yeah. to the point yeah. right away and – She's just so sweet about it, and I, I think it's amazing that you have an, a manager like that that wants to push you and there for you and probably like a sister to you, you know, somebody like like a family member. Totally, yeah. I feel like that through happens. all of this, she really does, like, <clears throat> we just become so close, and she really does feel just like family, and it's, it's so nice, too, because I feel like as an artist that's independent, I'm not signed to a label or anything. And I'm just doing a lot of this, mm -hmm. um, independently. It's so nice to have somebody like her who's so passionate about what I'm doing too, that she takes care of so much of the business side, but is still so communicative with me and making sure that it's what I want and making sure we're on the same page. But it allows me to focus a lot more on the creative side and be writing and, and producing and, um, and recording and all of that. And so, I don't have to split that time and energy so I can put more into my craft, which is mm -hmm. so, so, so nice. But I know that 
I trust her and that she's taking care of that and that those things are still happening. Um, that is so nice as an artist because it's hard if you're having to do all of that on your own because you don't have as much creative energy or time to put into that. And so it's nice that um, she's so great and that I trust her enough to take care of a lot of those things so I can just be focused on yeah, um, creating. Because it's also amazing that, you know, she gives you the opportunity where you don't have to stretch stress as much and maybe she'll take more things off your hands yeah. that she can handle and you keep focused yeah. on what you're doing so you don't, you know, get – distracted or frustrated or right. anything um because i know you're a musician uh i wanted to play one of your songs shortly but i wanted to ask you have you ever received or gotten writer's block with being a musician oh my gosh <laughs> yes. i feel like if any if any songwriter says they've never experienced writer's block they're lying to you <laughs> i've never I asked like you're the just... first person yeah it's i feel like it's an inevitable part of the process yeah. because i mean there have been times that i sat down at the piano and i wrote a song and it just came out in like 30 minutes and it's the best feeling ever but there's a lot of times that you have an idea or you're not sure what you want to write about or i mean with quarantine even and with coronavirus it's hard because yeah. i'm not traveling as much i'm not playing as many shows i'm not around people and so i have to find other ways to be inspired and at the beginning i was um I was really inspired. I wrote so many songs and it was great. But then all of a sudden I hit this lull where I'm like, I haven't like traveled. I haven't gone out and seen people. I haven't done anything. And so I just wasn't feeling inspired and I felt writer's block. And it was frustrating because I was like, when I, of course, when I have all this time to be at home writing and creating is when I have writer's block and when it's frustrating. Um, How long does that last, Ash? Honestly, it depends. I think for that, that lasted about like, two weeks. I oh. had started a couple songs, but they didn't really go anywhere. And mm-hmm. I just felt really stuck. And so I just kind of took a break from it. And I was like, I'm just gonna do other things like find other ways to be creative. So I got like a watercolor paint set and started painting and was just going for walks outside and just like got this embroidery kit to just embroider clothes and just be creative in other ways. And then I came back to the music without expectation, without feeling like, okay, I need to write something great today. It was just like, how do I feel? What do I want to write about? And when I took some of that pressure off and I just focused on the music and how I was feeling and just Mm -hmm. creating just for the sake of creating, um, that helped a lot. Oh my gosh. Wow. Well, I'm glad that, you know, you got over writer's block, but that seems super frustrating uh, to the point where it you're is. like, I just want to, I want to write this song, but I, I can't think of anything. I mean, did you feel like when you were like looking around trying to find inspiration, it was just nothing, like n- nothing could help the situation? Yeah. I just, and then also I think there were a couple of songs that I was trying to write, but I'm like, uh, everyone's already written this or people have already written this so much better than I have. So why okay. am I even trying? So you were but being negative too- on yourself. Yeah. Okay. And I think, I think sometimes it is necessary to just like step away because if you just try and work it out and you'll get more frustrated and and it's not productive. Yes. I think it's good sometimes to just step away and take a deep breath and just, you know, do what you need to do and then obviously come back to it. But, um, you just, the sad truth about writer's block is you just have to write through it. Yes. You, it's, there are times when it's necessary to take a break, but you have to just keep trying and keep writing. And then one day, all of a sudden you just write a song and it's fine and normal. Um, it's yeah. And it's hard because you never really know when it's going to hit. Like there's not a rhyme or reason for why writer's block is happening. And then you can write a song and feel so great and then get stuck again. Or you can just go months and months and months and just feel so inspired and write. Um, it's just, it's, that's a hard part too, is you never know when it's coming. <laughs> No, I totally understand, and I feel like, like you said, it's super frustrating, but I'm thankful that you can always look past that, either pursue trying to push yourself through it or walk away and come back to it later. There's other things you can do. You can yeah. work on chords if you can't work on lyrics, and, you know, sometimes the frustration happens both ways. I mean, with writer's block, it could be lyrics or chords, correct? Right. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, so and that's why, too, I think – Something that I've learned, which is a big part of the reason why I moved to Nashville. Before I moved to Nashville, I didn't really write with other people. Okay. I wrote a lot by myself. And it's a scary thing. It's hard because when you're writing with other people, you have to be vulnerable. And it's kind of scary to put your ideas out there because you don't really know for Mm -hmm. sure what their style is. Or if they think that your ideas are bad. um, And you want to make sure that you're on the same page. But that has helped me so much is co-writing and just learning from other people and having other people inspire different things or pull different things out of you and vice versa 
And so co-writing is such a good way. Um, and I also feel like too, when I'm in, when I have writer's block or if I'm frustrated, mm -hmm. I will just intentionally schedule co-writes. So I can't just be like, well, I have writer's block. I'm not going to write today. I'm like, nope, I have to write because I scheduled with this person and I have to work through it. So that's something that helps me too. Wow. I love that. I love the positivity though, that you, you push on yourself. Cause I know a little bit earlier you were saying that you throw some negative on yourself and that's fine. I know we all do it, but you always want to look for the positive impact on anything. So when you tell yourself something different, that's positive, it actually pushes yourself to want to increase it and do it amazing. So you always want to stay positive no matter what, even be a musician perhaps. Yeah, totally. And I think too, like, especially in co-writes, if you have bad energy, like the other person can feel that or and when I'm in a co-write and there's like weird or bad energy it's so hard to yeah or feel like awkward or something yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah and so it's nice there's a I mean a lot of times co-writes feel like therapy because we'll just sit and talk and just kind of like just chat about you know what's going on in our lives yeah. or how we're feeling and out. then it's like whatever we talk about sometimes inspires an idea or a concept and then we'll write about that and that's what I love so much about co-writing is it's a beautiful way to get to know people and to connect with people, but then also to create and to create with other people and to learn. And so it's, it's something I was really intimidated by and scared of for a long time, but now it's become something that I love, especially when you find the people that you just work super well with and mm -hmm. that you click with and that you're comfortable with. Co-writing is the absolute coolest thing. When Actually, it it's more like you're vibing, even though you're co-writing and then you're going to be upset when yeah, it's over totally. because you're going to be like, when are we going to write another song together? Yeah, I think, and it's interesting too, because I've had experiences where I've written with people and it was incredible. And then we'll get back together and we can't write anything. Like we're oh, just stuck. Boy. And yeah. it's like, was that a fluke that we wrote something together and it worked? Or is this a fluke that we're just having like an off day? Yeah. But I think I've learned too that, I mean, nobody's immune to it. Like nobody can sit and write an amazing song every single day. Like everybody goes through it and it's just part of the process that you have to accept. Um, but you just have to push through and power through and keep writing and, and writing with other people and finding, you know, the people that you vibe with and that you work well with. Well, speaking of music, we have two of your tracks. I wanted to know which one you wanted to play first. Um, play Running first because that one came out a couple years ago and then we'll save the next one for last because that's the most recent one that I released. Perfect. Can we uh, know a little bit behind Running? Yeah. So um, I wrote this song at the time. Um, I had been dating this guy and he was also a musician and he was moving to New York okay. and I was about getting ready to move to Nashville and we were just trying to figure out what we were going to do, but we were still in love with each other, but we wanted to, you know, mm -hmm. pursue our careers and give that a fair shot and, um, not hold each other back and the long distance was going to be tricky. So we were just trying mm -hmm. to figure out what we were going to do. Um, and so this was like right right before he was leaving and we were just trying to figure things out I just sat down and this is one of those songs that I wrote in like 45 minutes it just I felt like it poured out of me that's amazing um, right by the piano I bet yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> so that was a cool moment because it just felt like oh like this release of all these emotions and things I had been thinking about it just um it was really nice to just get that off my chest in music it's a very cathartic and therapeutic experience for me so that is what running is about that's beautiful. We're going to play Running by Ashley Hess. We will be right back to the DJ Danny Show on HamiltonRadio.net. Stream HR2. And when we come back, we will be mentioning a little bit about uh, previous on American Idol and what she's been doing through quarantine. Stay tuned. You were busy running.
Hello? Oh, okay. And we're back to the DJ Jenny show on HamiltonRadio.net stream HR2 with Ashley Hess. We just heard the amazing, beautiful musician singing, running. Um, girl, that song has so much soul. Um, I definitely feel like when I heard you a rock with more music. Hello, you're listening to the DJ Danny Show from 6:30 EST to 7:45 on Tuesday nights. Recently, we had celebrities from Freeform, Netflix, Team Nick, Nickelodeon, and Disney Channel. You never know who the next guest will be. Okay, so we're back to the DJ Danny Show now. Ashley, that song has so much soul, and I feel like I heard some jazz in it yeah I, it's yeah. beautiful um i feel like i'm gonna hear some blues from you next with like a mix of everything um wow well if you thought that way about that song just wait till you hear the next one <laughs> i am excited i'm gonna say i have goosebumps from running okay <laughs> thank goosebumps. you thank you so much i appreciate that i love it I, I i really love your vocals in it and i'm more excited that you know you had the the music it wasn't so loud and the meaning I mm. mean behind that is a lot of musicians, sometimes when you hear their songs, the music is louder than the voice. And I feel like it, it doesn't really give them that much credit on, onto their amazing voice. You always hear mm. the music louder yeah. and you always have to make your voice louder than the music. And then it just doesn't sound amazing as the record. So I love knowing that I can just hear your voice plain, crystal clear, beautiful. <laughs> and then your amazing uh, piano playing in the background. Yeah, thank you. That um, it's interesting that you bring that up because yeah, I recently I just got like all the equipment that I need to start getting a little bit more into production. And I'm not trying to be a producer by any means, but just enough to do like demo work and to track my songs good enough to send to other producers to give them an idea of what I'm thinking. Yeah, just to help um, yourself. But there's mm -hmm. so yeah, yes, there's so much that goes into production, and there's there's a lot. Like I think when people hear a song, they don't really think about everything that goes into the production, like every track, um, like the guitar, the piano, the vocals, like all these things, the drums, How many bass, takes? Like there's so much that goes into it. Mm -hmm. um, and then on top of that is mixing and mastering. Like you have to get your levels right, making sure that the voice isn't drowned out, making sure that one instrument's not louder than another. There's just, and mixing and mastering will completely change the sound of a song. And so I think there's just so much, like I said, there's so much to learn and there's so much in music. Um, that I think a lot of people don't really understand and don't really recognize goes into making 
music and recording music and and every aspect of music. There's just a lot that goes on behind the scenes, but that's a huge one. That's super important is finding somebody who can mix and master your song. So all the levels are right. And so everything blends and nothing is standing out in a bad way, you know? Yeah. So after um, being in quarantine for only a few months right now, um, besides self-producing, I also heard that you are working on an album with your friends. Yeah, so um, what's been nice about quarantine is that it's given me a lot of time to do things that I haven't had as much time to do because I travel a lot, I Mm -hmm. perform a lot, and so um, I've had a lot more time on my hands, and like I said, I've wanted to get a little bit more into learning production so I can at least make demos and um, record things on my own, and it's perfect timing because in quarantine, the cool thing about music is that you can record things and send stems, or what they call back and forth, Mm -hmm. to other artists, and they can record things on their own and send it back to you and so it's been cool because I've been able to work um with a friend of mine his name's Jake Smith and he is an incredible keys player um and just a really cool songwriter and musician and um I've I love R&B and I love 90s R&B and I love the vibe I love like that Lauren Hill and even like Destiny's Child like the whole oh my gosh 90s girl band Uh and all of that like boys to men like all of the 90s just R and B, I absolutely love, and I just have a the, I have a sweet spot for '90s R and B, and I've always wanted to do kind of explore that a little bit, like obviously my version of it, and still make it me, but um, just kind of you know mess around with those ideas yeah, of a test it out R&B and inspired mm-hmm. project. And so um, there's a couple songs that we worked on that are pretty like they sound pretty '90s and it's pretty fun, and then there's like this really um, I'm actually really proud of it. It's a really cool, almost like a Disney sounding ballad. And oh then my it's, gosh. Just, it's like a lot of things that I love and things that I'm influenced by that don't really show up in the music that I put out and the music that um, I have that will be coming out soon in an EP that I'm working on and uh, eventually an album that I'll be putting out. Mm-hmm. But um, in the works. I just wanted to use this quarantine time to explore the sides of music that I, I don't typically do, but that I still love and that inspire me. And so um, my friend Jake is just amazing and he was so down to do it and he's such a good songwriter too. So we wrote these songs together and are producing them together. Um, And the goal is to put them out um, at the end of the summer. So I'm super excited about it. Oh, the end of the summer. Yes. No, I'm really excited too. And I was going to say when you were saying that it's different compared to what you're singing now, Ashley, you threw me off completely. I was going to say, are you going to join Mass Singer? Because that's what everybody does on Mass Singer. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they use it all Amazing. to throw off, you know, the their viewers, listeners, family members, and friends, where they have different, you know, abilities that nobody knew of. And mm, you find mm-hmm. out who all the it. celebrities are. So when you said that, I was like, maybe she's going to join. We'll see. <laughs> Never know. <laughs> Mass Singer's coming back next year. Uh, Amazing. So as for yourself... Uh, getting into self-production that is amazing and that's super complicated at first so what made you want to get involved more was it something where it just felt like it was maybe like harder with quarantine because you couldn't really reach out to people like behind the booths or like what exactly yeah okay yeah I think I just also want I'm a very independent person Mm -hmm. and I like to just be able to do things um, it's really hard for me to rely on other people, but I know in music, especially like there's so much that you need support and help from other people. But I also just think the more that, you know, and the more skills that you have, mm-hmm. um, and the more things you can bring to the table, the better opportunities that will come for you. And so, um, I also just thought that it would, the better I understand production and, um, one, it will just open me up to more opportunities to be able to record things and send them to friends and have them send stuff back to me and me to put stuff together. But also I think um, there's an element of it too that helps me understand just how to be better in the studio and better understand, you know, if I want a certain sound or I want a certain thing in a song, understanding how to get it or what that sound is or what that looks like. And there's, there's just so much um, in production that I just haven't, I never even have the time to dive into that world. And so now I'm just trying to learn as much as I can just to create better music and mm-hmm. to just open up um, 
my mind and expand my creative abilities and to just be able to, you know, do more. And it's been really fun. It's a lot and it's very, very overwhelming. And I feel like it's one of those things that I will never be done learning, but it's been really fun. And I'm at the very, very beginning stages of it. Um, (laughs) But it's been really cool to just play around with it and um, to learn. It feels like a lot of it is definitely an education as well because you're learning and you're learning how to create and deal with all these habits. I mean, you're also going to be learning how to, like you were saying, you can create sets where you have to record every single thing separately and then you have to all put it together. Then you have to learn how to edit it. And you have a lot ahead of you, but I'm sure it's very fun. Um, it's just- Yeah, I have a lot ahead of me. But what's been nice too is I have a lot of friends who – who are producers or who know enough to help me. And they've all been so down to be like, if you need help with things or if you need anything, like just let me know and I can give you some pointers and things like that. But also YouTube has been my best friend. Yes. Uh huh. <laughs> Which is really good because YouTube is so amazing for anyone out there that's trying to create or do anything nowadays. Um, mm-hmm. Especially totally. with just learning how to play the piano or, you know, playing guitar, like you said yeah. earlier. I think yeah, YouTube that's is... how I learned. Oh, you so. did. That's awesome. That's really awesome, though. Yeah. Um, because that's the best way to go versus going to a teacher. I know it, it sucks to say that now, but right now because of quarantine, everybody's doing things online. So the easiest and cheapest way is YouTube. Totally, you have the resources right at your fingertips. So why not take advantage? So what I think is amazing about you, self, you know, you doing it with your self production is how you're learning how to create all these different bits and edits where you can use them to your advantage one day to where you get that perfect mix. Um, Even if it's with like different instruments or different ways you record your voice and you get that amazing like falsetto or something in the beginning or something leading down to like a small tune where it just sounds amazing for anyone to listen to. And then the best part is you can even put yourself on your own album as a self-product, self-producer, you know, that you help. Yeah, which is so cool. Yes. How cool is that? <laughs> you could be like, um, you really do control everything. Like, you do everything for yourself. You have a lot of people helping you, but you definitely deserve the credit. And you could put your own name on the back of your album, and that's pretty awesome. Yeah, that is definitely a perk, but I will say I am definitely not there yet to have my name be the only name. There are so, so many incredible people that are helping me, and I'm so grateful for that. But just taking the time to learn and just improve as much as I can. I think it's so exciting, though. I mean, I'm truly excited to hear more about this EP that you have working with um, your friend Dave. I mean, when you guys get closer to, like, the release date, I don't know if you want to reach out to me again where I can even have you come back on if you want to talk about it or if you post anything and promote it because I'm sure I want to know more about it. Your fans want to know about it. Um, Hamilton Radio, the network you're on right now, wants to know about it. So I will definitely keep you and Alyssa updated for that. Um, Even if you have anything that you want to premiere or you can even do a DJ Danny Show exclusive where you have the song premiering the night before or the night after, like there, but they have to tune Mm. into the show to listen to it. See, look at that. That's where you get all your real cool. hits. <laughs> yes, I love that. So, That's a good um, idea. There's a lot of stuff rolling around in my head right now. But I just want to <laughs> do the best for you and your music. I mean, it's amazing and so breathtaking. I mean, I can't wait Thank to hear you. the next song that we'll be playing shortly. Um, but Yay. I wanted to uh, flash back a little bit to where a lot of people have known you from American Idol. Uh, as yes. Yeah. So I wanted to know a little bit about what the audition process was when you first auditioned. Yeah, so it's interesting because it's not just, I think a lot of people think that American Idol, all of a sudden you just show up and you sing in front of the celebrity judges and it doesn't work that way. Okay. Um, There are other rounds that you have to go through before that. And I had a friend who was connected with American Idol that was actually, um, that reached out and was like, hey, I really think that you should audition. And I had just moved to Nashville and it was not on my radar at all. I was really focused on moving to Nashville and songwriting. Mm -hmm. Um, But he got me in in, um, audition with the executive producers. And so I auditioned for them. I just thought, you know, okay, I have nothing to lose. Like might as well. But honestly, I just, I didn't really think anything would come from it because I was like, I don't have a crazy story that's compelling that they'll be interested in. And I don't really have like a big, crazy diva, like powerhouse 
voice. Mm -hmm. Um, And so I just, I don't know. I didn't really think that I fit the mold of what they were looking for, but I just thought, you know, I have nothing to lose. I might as well. So I went and it went well. Um, And then after that round, I auditioned for the celebrity judges for Katy Perry, Luke Bryan and Lionel Richie. And it was the most surreal experience ever. It was so bizarre to walk in and see these three, you know, celebrities in their own right and then their own genre just sitting there and I was about to sing for them and I was just like this is wild like what a crazy thing but it was so fun and it was such a cool opportunity um for me to do that and it the response to it was incredible um and it truly truly that audition completely changed my life that's amazing I wanted to say though when you walked in that room did you not get butterflies did you feel like you weren't going to remember what you were going to say when you had those three iconic (laughs) stars right there Because I would. I mean, when I walked in, there was that initial shock value of like, oh my gosh, I've only seen these people on TV or in magazines, but they're actually sitting in front of me in the flesh. But what was really nice is that they just, you know, asked me my name, where I was from, and we talked a little bit. And it just kind of humanized them a bit. And it made it easier for me to talk to them just as normal people instead of just, you know, these untouchable stars and artists. Um, And so that helped a lot that we just kind of had a little conversation before and it just kind of made it seem a little bit more normal instead of me just walking in and being like, hi, my name's Ashley S. And I'm going to sing you a song. Like it was nice to just make it a little bit more personal than that. Yeah. Cause they definitely try to um, talk to you and get to know you a little bit just to make you feel more comfortable before you sing for them. Yeah. Which totally. is great because I don't know back then American Idol, if they did that, I don't remember Paula Abdul or Simon Cowell or Randy Jackson ever doing that. They might've did they? I don't even remember. Oh, I don't. I don't know. Maybe, but and I mean, obviously, too. There's a lot that I yeah. mean. There's so much. I spent so many hours that day, and they showed like a five minute clip, and so there's so much that they don't show too. But we we had a conversation before, which was really I appreciated that a lot mm-hmm. um, because it made me just kind of feel like I was just singing for three people instead of three of the biggest stars. <laughs> well, that's amazing. And that definitely is a huge accomplishment for yourself because even if you were on a TV show and you got to sing for them, you can still look back and say you're a musician and you still sang for them. So you don't even need to yeah, mention totally. you were on American Idol. You can still give your gratification, clarification that you were, you sang for them. I mean, you can't say you yeah. opened up for them, but you sang in a room <laughs> in them. So. Yeah, and multiple times in that they, you know, gave me feedback, and I learned so much from that. I'm so, so grateful for that experience. Well, I think it's amazing that you were on that for season 17, and I just got to give you props because you're an amazing singer. I can't wait to hear a lot Thanks. more from you, and I just want to, yeah, I mean, I just want to let you know, even though you were on that show, it might have helped with your voice or any of the ideas or roles that you were looking for, um, you know, like different mm-hmm. um advices that they gave you to maybe help pursue pursue your role better you know being a musician um which is probably a lot of advice that they helped with but you are going so far in life and striving that i'm so proud of you and um i, thank I, I just you. got to meet wow, you so you. <laughs> it's it's really nice to uh, see someone literally shoot up so high um after getting to know them so i'm really excited for a lot more that you have going on i mean you have Thank a lot, you. A lot yeah, going on. I appreciate on, so. that so much. It is definitely a journey. I think what was crazy about American Idol was that all of a sudden I was on such a huge platform and getting so much exposure, mm-hmm. what felt like overnight, because once my audition aired, yeah. so yeah. many people had seen it and started following me. And like, I just got this big pl- platform and it kind of felt like it was overnight, but there were so many years of me working and practicing and learning and doing all these things that led up to that. And so it's really work. nice. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, to have that success on a journey. And it's just a matter of timing and you have to be patient and keep working at it. But I'm a firm believer that if you work at it and you're consistent and you just power through, um, you'll find success. Definitely. And I think a lot of it is you having courage in yourself, like encouragement, where you can push yourself um, further than you think, even though it might get a little upsetting or frustrating um, or just something that it's hard to deal with. It's still a process that takes and as you said it took you a a lot of people don't know that it took you a long a long haul um a lot of musicians normally feel like they received it overnight just like you you know with your your fandom like all your fans and followers Um, Mm and I'm still wondering to this day do do they know how long it took you 
or do they believe it was just you walked into a room, sang for the judges, yeah. and you got followers? Like, yeah, totally. And it's like it's one of the things too that like I am so grateful for the success that I've had thus far. And I honestly I didn't know how I was going to get to this point or when mm-hmm. it would happen. And it's been so nice to have the success. But it's one of those things that I still feel like I have such a long way to go. And that's the funny thing about this industry and just honestly with anyone that's passionate or um, really dedicated to something is there's always more that you can be doing, but it's so important to look back and appreciate how far you've come. Oh, definitely. And it's also amazing when you look back and actually appreciate it because that could be hard sometimes for a musician, not saying anyone has an ego, but it's just, you forget, you know, about some people back there that helped you or anything. And that's, that's very upsetting from time to time, but it also can be, it's just you have so much you're doing or so much on your plate. Um, and that's another thing with Alyssa. Like I said, she helps you with that. So you don't ever have to worry about getting a huge plate and you're doing it all on your own. You have a whole team that's there guided by you and like helping you, supporting you all through the way. And I think that, yes. that makes you grow so much stronger as a musician as well. Totally, totally. That helps so much. Yeah, it's and, so important to have it. And it's so exciting to like sit, not sit back and watch, but like watch it, watch yourself grow where you know where you became and where you came from to where you are now. Oh, totally. Yeah, I feel like I'm a different person than I was <laughs> even six months ago. Like I just, I've been growing and learning so much through this whole process and it's a really, really cool thing. Well, that's really exciting. I'm glad to hear that. I mean, yeah, I'm really excited to hear that and I'm so excited to find out more stuff that you're working on, especially after COVID, um, because yeah, this is just too. <laughs> <laughs> this is just so like it's different because it's all quarantined right now. But hopefully, you will be. I don't know if yours yours isn't lifted yet in California, correct? Um, yeah, it's it's still pretty strict in California, but in Nashville, um, it's not too bad. But I mean, I still can't play live shows. And that is what I miss the most. I Mm -hmm. love performing. I love meeting people. I love connecting with audiences. And I am itching to get back to doing that. I miss it so much. Well, another thing you could do is you can even talk to Alyssa about this before I do uh, Cat of the Week real quick. You can try to do uh, live streaming on any of your social media. Yeah, I've done. Yeah, I've done a couple of those. I've done a bunch of live streaming. I've done a there've been it's actually been really cool. People have gotten creative. Yes. And there have been a couple virtual um music festivals that I've played in that have been so fun oh, and so cool yes. and a couple different virtual concerts that I've done. So that's been really nice to do. I love that. Um, I'm so grateful that I've been able to do that. It's just not the same without a live audience, but it's, yes. I'm still it's glad a little that different. I could be doing that. Yes. But another thing you should do is um, tease your audience or your fans to the point where you start dropping snippets of if you have like, you know, the song you're working with, with your friend. Um, because it's something new that they they don't know that's going to be different from what you normally sing. So what you would do is you would tease a few snippets here and there. Um, you know where you you know where like celebrities just post like less than fifteen seconds of a song on their like story by accident or Instagram or something, and you don't say anything about it. You just let your fans and stuff brew from that, and it also creates you know all this suspense where where's this going to end or where's this going to start for Ashley, um, and then yeah. from that Ashley. You bring it to a live stream where you, if it's still in quarantine and COVID situation, you and your friend play live that night where you have everybody tune in and you make it the best night of your life and watch your following. So fun. Yes. What a fun idea. I love that. Because I will be there too, (laughs) virtually. (laughs) Amazing. Thank you. (laughs) Yes. So, I mean, I think that is an amazing thing that you should do, but you said you're doing uh, live streams and stuff like that. You should also see if you can do um, Zoom meetings or see if somebody, maybe one of your fans or something, they want to, like, set up where it's, like, a meet and greet or something over the phone or Zoom where you can talk to Alyssa about that. And it can even be where, I don't know, maybe they donate something and then you can do a free Zoom with them, you know, where it's just Mm. that you both kind of get something on both ends, but you're also getting the chance to meet some of your fans that maybe you never knew of or they know about you, but you know about them. So it's just helping with socializing for both. Yeah. I love that. That's so fun. All right. Give me one second, Ashley. I'm going to be doing cat of the week real quick. I have Lee Mar. Okay. Okay. 
Ready, Doc G? This is Train, and a new segment on the DJ Danny Show is Cats of the Week. Cause I was born in the wild. Hello. So for Puppy Kitty New York City Cat of the Week, June 9th, I have Limor. Meet Limor. He's named for the ring around his tail. He has been through two life-saving surgeries and is finally ready for a forever home. He was found on the streets of Queens. He's an independent guy with a strong personality. He does like to be on pet on his terms. He does bite and swipe, but he loves to be around his foster time all the time. He sleeps with her, and he likes to follow her around everywhere where he loves being around people. He also loves to play fetch. He has so much personality and he does agree. He does ignore you when he's mad. He does not take up all the bed and he gets in the garbage if he hasn't been fed. <laughs> that's so adorable. Oh my gosh. He definitely needs an adopter that's willing to accept his hard times with his physical attention because he doesn't want it because he wants to be around and be around you next to you all the time. He does not he would not be great with kids and best as an only cat. If you have that special love Limar needs, please contact Puppy Kitty, P U P P Y K I T T Y, N Y C I T Y dot org for help with fostering, adoptions, and transportation. Again, Limar, P U P P Y K I T T Y, N Y C I T Y dot org. Thank you. Oh my gosh, that is such an adorable cat. <laughs> I, I'm showing a picture of a cat, and I think it's just so adorable because I've never heard a cat jump in a garbage can if he doesn't get fed. I want to see my cat yeah, do that. What? It's just so cute. I can't. That's cranky. <laughs> I love that. I think that also the best thing about that is every animal has their own different, like, persona where it even occurs as a musician, you know, where it's stuff that you enjoy and what you like compared to what other musicians like and don't like. We all have our own different aspects, and it's so amazing how it can happen to a cat. Like, it's just mind-boggling. I can't. It's own personality. <laughs> yes, it's, it really is. Now I want to do that to my cat. I want to put her in a trash can. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. So, Ashley, we have so much that we spoke of today, and I know that we talked a little bit about American Idol, which is just something that I wanted to highlight on because that was something that a lot of people and your friends and family do know you from, from being on season 17. But I think it's pretty amazing and truly exciting that you are working on new music still, um, helping yeah. out with self-promotion for yourself. And another thing is with you doing that as well, once you learn all the ropes, you can then call yourself a promoter. Not saying you have to take over from being a musician, <laughs> but if your friends ever need help in promoting and they don't know what they're doing, you could be that person they go to when you're going to them right now, you know? So it's all, you all share and you all just branch out and you enjoy and experience so much going on. Yeah, that's so true. So I didn't even think about that. That's, but that's such a good point. Yeah. So when you're like educating yourself, you never know if you have another friend. Um, preferably me, maybe. I want to learn how to self-promote. You could teach me. <laughs> um, and everything. And you just, you know, they reach out to you or whenever you're free and they ask you questions. That's another thing I was going to say with your fans. If anybody has questions for you or ways that they want to reach out to you, um, how can they do so? What is your social media? So you can find me on all social media. It's just at Ashley Hess Music. And it's plain and simple. It's that across all social media. So just at Ashley Hess Music. And they can reach out to you if they have, like, any questions. Like, what if they want to learn how to do self-promotion or they want to ask you anything that's going on with quarantine or how you're keeping yourself educated or busy? Yeah, I do a lot of Instagram lives. And so that's a really good place because people can chime in and type out their questions and I can answer things there. Um, I'm not a professional self-promoter by any means. <laughs> Obviously, I've learned a lot of things, but I'm happy to answer any questions that way. Um, yeah, like Instagram Live is a really big thing that I love to do to connect with fans. So I would highly suggest you checking out my Instagram because I, um, I would do an Instagram Live, and that's a fun way to answer those questions. Well, Ashley, when are you doing Instagram Live again? Good question. I am... 
probably next week. I typically do them Monday nights. And okay. during quarantine, I've been having other artist friends jump on and sing a couple of their songs oh. just to introduce artists that I love to my following. And so I've been doing that on Monday nights. Okay, that's exciting. So everybody that tuned in, she yeah. does them Monday nights. You could check out her Instagram at Ashley, Ashley Hess for everybody to tune in and get to know more information. And like I said, also with this new song, when you have it coming out with your friend, the new album, you can always do an Instagram live with him or a Zoom call where you invite a few yep. fans to listen live. Yeah, fun. Like on a Zoom or something, you know, where you keep it. You keep it so yeah, exclusive, have... but you don't want to make it, like, completely all out there. Maybe, like, a few fans can, like, listen to the exclusive, and then you release it, you know? So they get that VIP treatment, even though it's over the phone? Totally, yeah. <laughs> so Yeah, we have some cool ideas um, for this upcoming release that I'm excited about, so. Oh, I'm really excited. To... Yes, I really am. And we have another song that we're going to be closing with again tonight. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about this next song? Ashley? Sorry, what was that? Oh, no problem. I said we have another song that we're going to be closing with tonight. Did you want to um, emphasize on this next song? Yeah, so this song is a song that I actually released early this year. It's called Quiet. And uh, this is the first song I wrote after my time on American Idol. And um, there was just so much that had happened, and my life had completely changed. Mm -hmm. And it was such an incredible experience, but there were also a lot of hard aspects of it and a lot of hard things that I was just really overwhelmed by. Oh, and it was hard for me to talk about those things because I didn't want to seem ungrateful or um, I'm just a very bubbly, outgoing, pretty glass half full type of person. And it's mm -hmm. harder for me to talk about, you know, things that I struggle with or stress or frustrations that I have. And so this song is kind of just about that, about anyone else who struggles to talk about the hard stuff or feelings with people. I have a few people in my life that I, you know, I'll open up and talk to with, but even still, sometimes it's hard for me. And so, um, this is a song that I wrote about that. I, that's an amazing title though. Quiet. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it's like, I didn't even hear the song and I already feel it's speaking to me because it's what you put behind it. You know, like why you named it. Totally. That. It's, it's amazing when you guys, um, you musicians, when you write songs that you write it still based off of something versus a title. There's so many people I ask yes. what the song's about and they're just like, oh, I don't know. I just like that title. I'm just like, oh, well, sure, good. no problem. Well, I'm excited for you to listen to the song. <laughs> yes, I totally am. So we are going to play Quiet um, by Ashley Hess and when we come back, we'll get ready to close the show. Stay tuned. Trying my best to hide it But you can tell that there's something on my mind And you're so quick to recognize it But I'll just turn away and tell you that I'm fine But I'm sitting here trying to figure out my brain
goodness gracious Ashley I I just have to okay I'm tearing up here I think I, I'm like uh -huh. crying <laughs> the emotion You're in so that sweet. song is just so strong um to where I kind of felt like I was being pulled through the situation with you you know where mm. it's just all frustrating and it's hard because you know our brain only wants to listen to so much and there's some stuff we want to tune out and we don't want to listen and it's just it gets super frustrating and all i want to say is yeah. that is an amazing beautiful song thank you very and i also wanted to um ask you and i will ask Alyssa after the show i have a new show um i believe it's going to be starting maybe this friday or next friday it's called dj danny show songs where it's all guests that i've had on my show and i play their songs i wanted to ask if it's okay if i played your songs on the show yes of course okay. i would love that thank you so much i just want your permission um just in case but i'll reach out to Alyssa so i get her permission as well because she is your manager and i don't want to go above and beyond under people <laughs> um and everything but perfect thank you and thank you again so much for this interview. I really loved getting to know you. And yeah, reach out if you need anything. Um, I mean, Alyssa gave me your number. I don't know if you have mine or if you need anything, you could reach out to her and then you can contact Perfect. me. Um, but if you need Perfect. anything, reach out, let me know. And I can't wait to hear your new album coming out um, the end of the summer. That's exciting. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Yes. I'm excited about it, too. So I'll let you know when it comes out and you can play it on your show. Yes, please. Thank you so much. Well, I hope you have a great rest of the day. Thank you for an amazing interview. And good night, everyone. Waking you up with more music. Hello, you're listening to the DJ Danny Show from 6.30 EST to 7.45 on Tuesday nights. Recently, we had celebrities from Freeform, Netflix, T-Nick, Nickelodeon, and Disney Channel. Never know who the next guest will be.